All right, I got this thing cut up, trimmed up. Um, just to, it's a little lopsided, you'll see. Uh, that's because where this mark is here is where the uh, crankshaft position sensor goes through. So there's a connector on the back side of this when it's installed. Uh, if you're not familiar, the Coyote, the trigger wheels on the back of the crankshaft, it has a rear main seal holder, like similar to like an LS. So it's got a removable uh, aluminum piece back here in the, the position sensor indexes in that in that uh, rear main seal holder and the connector for it's right here, it fastens to the block right there as well. And then there's another sensor uh, here <coughs> that you have to reach the plug to. Obviously it's nice to try to make that stuff as serviceable as possible without having to remove the block plate, right? So uh, it's cut into shape um, about to, you can tell uh, this is why you make a cardboard template because I got a little ambitious there. <laughs> so I'm gonna slide into the car and stick this in there uh, just to show you guys uh, how it fits in the car before I transfer it over to the steel. All right, since I'm doing this all at my house, it's kind of hard for you guys to see under here. I'll oh, check that out, I got an oil pan leak. Um, all right, so I'm gonna just put this up here. One dowel, other dowel, and then you'll see, through to the frame rail there, fits pretty good. Same on this side. Um, and then uh, up top, you can see where those sensor plugs are. I'll pull this back off real quick and just show you here. You see where the, that's how the, this is the, oh, that's the trigger wheel there. And then the position sensor, obviously, and then it's connections up top. So apologize for the poor lighting under here, <laughs> but uh, means that I'm doing this at home on the ground rather than at work on the hoist. It's a little tough, but uh, yeah. So that's uh, that's it for that. I'm gonna transfer this over to the steel and uh, get it cut out. back in the car again got the actual plate in there fitted I've got the frame rail prepped to be welded um, oh, the shadow from the GoPro uh, yeah so now I've got to put the transmission in this uh, the trans mount and uh, uh, basically I gotta get the trans in it the trans mount in it so that the just everything's in the location it's going to be when everything's installed and then I have to weld those uh, the mounts in there for the mid plate and honestly after that it's just a matter of putting the trans in for a final installation obviously paint all the stuff um, so it doesn't get all rusty but uh, yeah should be pretty straightforward so I'm gonna get the trans set in this and those mounts welded in there and go from there
All right, I got this thing sitting in place. Um, trans mount is pretty nice. Uh, but look up here at the block plate. See where I got it prepped. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to put the tabs up there, put a couple tack welds on them. Um, clean, you know, I'm gonna put the, I guess I'm gonna put the tabs up there, clamp the tabs to the plate. Uh, and then uh, I might just weld them in place with the trans in here and then pull it out to finish everything, weld the back side of it, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get that stuff clamped in place and get some welds on there. But this thing went in here really well. I mean, it fits really easy. Obviously the 6R80 is pretty tall in comparison, but the pan on the Turbo 400 is really wide. So I was a little worried about it, but uh, yeah, it fits no, no problem. So we'll get those tabs tacked in and go from there. All right, now that we got the uh, the block plate mounts welded in place, uh, at least on the back side, I'm going to uh, pull the block plate back out, pull the trans out, pull the block plate back out, uh, drill the holes in the block plate, trim the little bottom tabs up. I got a little corner in the top I'm gonna trim up again as well. Um, and then uh, finish welding those mounts in, and then the trans, the block plate stuff will basically be ready to go in. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, the uh, flex plate bolts. Um, so I've got to get those coming yet. So we won't be able to put the trains back in today um, But we'll get that at least ready to go back in and then I'm going to move on to something else check it out Here's a black plate all trimmed up and painted. Uh, this is a steel plate, normally an aluminum one, obviously you wouldn't paint it, but I was just concerned about it getting rusty and, you know, that kind of thing, all the corrosion aspects of that. I don't want it to like, you know, seize itself to the block or the trans and like that stuff is gonna work on each other. So hopefully the paint will help protect it a bit. Um, I've got the chassis side of it done as well. I'm gonna climb under there and show you what that stuff looks like all welded up and painted, so. Okay, here's the chassis side of it. You see they got the supports in there. There's one side. There's the other side. Oops, sorry. You see I painted the header a little bit because, yeah, whoops. That's okay. Um, so yeah, so normally these, uh, these braces that I have, sorry, I'm trying to hold three things at once here. Normally these braces, I would normally put one here uh, and then the block plate would set on it when you put the engine in, it would just give a stopping point for it. But since I removed this engine from the bottom, I can't really do that. So I just use them for supports in that direction, uh, which, will, which will do the trick. So. All right, that's it for the block plate side of stuff. I did get the flex plate bolts this week, so I'm gonna start putting the uh, transmission in it um, this weekend. So the video next week will probably have uh, be the trains installed, measuring drive shaft for length. I've got some cool stuff to talk about. We got some uh, uh, Motion Raceworks uh, speed sensor to go on the uh, 
uh, rear end side of the drive shaft and a strange yoke to put on it. Uh, I've got a new shifter, an M&M shifter and a trans cooler to install and show you guys those pieces as well. So make sure you subscribe and keep watching these builds as uh, the new stuff comes in and we start getting everything on the car and ready to go for the next season.